and all the sounds you just heard in the little ditty at the beginning of this video were generated with Waldorf's new tabletop synthesizer, the Rocket. Now we've seen a number of portable inexpensive synths introduced lately, but let's see what Rocket brings to the tabletop market. Made in Germany, the chassis is small and light, weighing in at two pounds. It's plastic, but there is a metal faceplate, and the build quality is very solid. The back of the unit has a single, unbalanced quarter-inch output. Just beside that is the quarter-inch input, allowing you to use Rocket's analog filter on external sounds. Also back here is the mini headphone jack, MIDI in and out ports, and the USB port for MIDI. The USB port also supplies the power for Rocket, and a cable and adapter are included. We tested it with a MacBook Pro and it worked fine, but it also works with PCs as well. The faceplate is where your sound sculpting action happens. Ten black plastic knobs and eight metal switches do the work. There's also a yellow launch button for triggering the sounds if no keyboard is connected. The launch key the default note is C3, but it memorizes the last MIDI note received, and then that note becomes the trigger note until the next one is received. The launch button also lights up when MIDI data is received. The volume knob only controls the headphone volume, not the main output level. In fact, there is no volume control on the main output. It's set to a line level, and that is it. The headphone jack has a noticeable noise floor on it, but fortunately the main output is much quieter. Rocket has one oscillator, which might sound a little underwhelming, but Waldorf has some clever features to leverage some fat sounds from this bad boy. This switch here lets you choose between a pulse and a saw waveform. Just beside that is the wave knob, which does a couple of different things depending on whether you have the saw or the pulse selected. With the pulse selected, the left half of the dial is for pulse widths from no width at all on the far left, which is silent, up to a 50% pulse width at 12 o'clock. A 50% pulse width is actually a square wave, so in a sense that's actually like getting a third waveform to work with. As you move the dial further to the right, you begin modulating the pulse width, and as you keep turning, first the depth of the modulation increases, and then the speed begins to increase. Now, if I select the sawtooth waveform, the wave dial acts a bit differently. Within the range between the leftmost to center position, the saw is in sync mode. That means that this one oscillator synth generates a second sawtooth sync slave waveform, and the left half of the wave dial is used to dial in the time on the sync envelope, indicated in green, while the tuning knob on the right is used to set the start frequency of the slave sync oscillator. Now I realize that sounds complicated, but you can actually hear it. Here I have a fairly lengthy envelope and I have the starting pitch of the slave oscillator tuned fairly high. So you can actually hear the pitch on the slave slowly glide down to the same pitch as the master sawtooth. As I shorten the envelope time, you can hear the difference. The sort of lasery ray gun quality gets more percussive. Pretty cool. Also pretty cool is what happens to our sawtooth when we dial the wave knob to the right of the center position. Now the rocket begins generating additional sawtooth waves as I move to the right with up to eight maximum, and the pitch of those is controlled by the tuning knob. To the left of the center, I'm detuning the oscillators for a fat poly saw sound, while to the right, I begin generating predefined musical intervals and chords. Wow. And now for another surprise. With the wave and tune knobs all the way to the right, I'm in unison mode. Now all eight of the sawtooths will play the MIDI notes that you trigger. That means you can actually play a chord of up to eight notes. Or you can play one note and all eight sawtooths will play the same pitch, but slightly detuned for a traditional fat unison sound. The third knob in our oscillator section is the glide knob, allowing me to dial in portamento, useful for solos, acid-style bass sounds, and effects. 
An oscillator without a filter isn't much fun, and Rocket comes equipped with a very nice sounding analog voltage controlled filter that can be set to low pass, band pass, or high pass. Cutoff frequency, resonance, and envelope modulation controls are available, and yes, when you crank up that resonance knob, the filter will self-oscillate, delivering the kind of analog noises the kids know and love. Percussion sounds, kick drums, textured drones, the whole hit parade. Also remember that the Rocket's analog filter can be used to process external audio by sending signal to the VCF input on the back. When you do this, you'll want to set the oscillator switch to pulse and the wave knob all the way to the left for a pulse width of zero so the oscillator is silent. Envelope controls on the Rocket are pretty minimal. The filter and the volume envelopes share controls. You get a sustain on or off switch, a release on or off switch, and a decay knob. The sustain switch is for the amplifier only, though. No attack control, attacks are always set to zero. Just beside the envelope controls is Rocket's boost switch that adds harmonics to the signal after the filter for a warmer, distorted sound. The final destination on our tour of Rocket's control panel is the LFO slash arpeggiator section. The LFO can be set to modulate either the oscillator's pitch or the cutoff frequency of the filter. There are depth and speed control knobs for it, and the waveform of the LFO can be square, triangle, or saw. Alternatively, you can set these controls as an arpeggiator. Now the depth control works with the arpeggiator from left to center. I'm choosing a one to four octave range, while dialing from the center to the rightmost setting lets you choose between eight preset rhythmic patterns. The switch that previously controlled the shape of the LFO now controls the direction of the arpeggiator with up, alternate, and random settings available. The speed dial now changes the speed of the arpeggiator in eighth note steps from 24 beats per minute up to 600, and if I send MIDI clock information, the rocket will automatically detect it and lock to that external clock. Now the speed dial steps through musical values that sync with the clock. One thing that you're not going to see on the Waldorf Rocket are any presets or storage places for sounds, but if you want to save your sound, you can use the sound dump function by pressing and holding the launch key for one second. The controller data is then sent via MIDI and you can easily record it to your sequencer or DAW. When you play back the controller data, the Rocket recognizes it and your sound comes back, although you will have to set the filter type switch and boost switch manually, but that shouldn't be too difficult to figure out. I should also point out that with the exception of the headphone volume knob, filter type switch, boost switch, and launch button, all the knobs and switches send MIDI controller information so you can record your sound tweaking as MIDI data in your DAW. There's also a free editor app for the iPad that allows you to edit and store patches. So obviously Rocket is not going to be for everyone. There's no noise generator, no internal patch storage, and the controls, especially the envelopes, are somewhat limited. Considering the price and portability though, you have to expect some limitations. Personally, I thought Rocket delivered some very nice sounds, especially basses, aggressive leads, and short arpeggiated sounds. Waldorf has also done a rather remarkable job of leveraging a lot of sound sculpting options from a minimum of controls, even managing to wring chords out of what is ostensibly a single oscillator synth. So while it may look like a toy, Waldorf's ultra-portable rocket is a pretty powerful little synthesizer. I'm Rob from B&H, and thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.